I guess my overall philosophy is that any student that I come in contact with can learn. Uh, they can learn to their highest level. And it's my objective or my goal to motivate them to strive to reach that level. Uh, and I don't think you can be in education and, and have an attitude that's not like that. You can't feel that a child cannot learn, otherwise you, you, you'd be in the wrong business. Um, I understand there are a lot of challenges in, in education. I'm not going to be the first one to say, yeah, it's an easy job. But yeah, I'm going to walk in and these kids are just going to open their heads up and say, okay, dump, dump some education in here and I'm ready to go. And that's, you know, that's the challenge and, you know, that's part of my philosophy is saying, okay, I know you can do it. I've just got to figure out what I need to do to make you want to do it. Meet David Helm, this year's Fayette County Public Schools High School Teacher of the Year. David is currently in his fourth year at Tates Creek High School teaching advanced human anatomy and physiology and general biology. A native of central Indiana, David came to the education profession via a non-traditional route. He enrolled at Purdue University in 1980 with the idea of getting an animal science degree, which he did four years later. That brought him to Lexington to work for an agribusiness company. Unsatisfied there, he started working for an investment company. It was while training new sales reps that he discovered the intrinsic rewards that come from teaching. That experience led him back to school where he earned his master's in secondary science education and his rank one in education administration at the University of Kentucky. David feels this alternative road to teaching has proved to be an invaluable asset in the classroom. The, the best tools that I've got with my kids is to draw on experiences that I've, that I've had that relate to whatever topic we're doing in class. That makes it very real for them. Uh, just to say, well, it says here on page 29, so and so and so and so, doesn't mean near as much as to say, well, I observed this, I was a part of this, this is what happened in the situation, and this is how it relates to what we're looking at here. And it's, I think it's a real valuable part of the, the, the education experience for the kids so that they can make that connection. A lot of times they don't see a connection. It's like, well, why are we doing this? Where will this come into play? Uh, so from, from that point of view, that's helped substantially. Uh, as, as far as the experience that I received, uh, just with, with learning to, to better manage my time, managerial type skills, uh, it, it helps substantially. Um, people skills. It's, you know, education is a real people business, and, and dealing with people, that takes some practice. And because that's what I was doing in general beforehand, I was, I was real comfortable with that. And it's, so it, it made that transition into education a lot easier. David Helm loves challenges. He sees every student who enters his classroom as a unique challenge for him to try to do everything that is possible to help that student be successful. He feels his greatest accomplishments in education come each year at graduation when former students walk across the stage to receive their diplomas. In just four years, he has become one of the most popular teachers at Tate's Creek. And one reason might just be because he truly believes in his students. And at a time when high school students often get a bad rap, David sees just the opposite. Uh, with high school kids, they, they do get a bad rap. And they, uh, primarily with the media, they, they do get a lot of the ne negative attention, I, aside from you know, the special stories done. But with the high school kids, because they are at the, the age or they're at the, at the stage in their life that they're making some very important decisions. And to be a part of that process, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I see a lot of kids who are interested in, in a variety of areas, and if I can give them some exposure to a specific area or help them decide one way or another, I, I enjoy that. Um, the, the, the kids that we deal with are extremely motivated. Uh, they, they tend to bring with them a lot in a, in a natural curiosity, especially in the science area. And so it's, it's just fun. I enjoy doing it. Another challenge David enjoys taking on is teaching advanced human anatomy and physiology. With advanced human anatomy, the, the, it it's probably represents the biggest challenge content-wise for me because the kids that come in here are extremely motivated uh, towards their, their, their goals. Uh, most of them want to head into a medically related field. Uh, they're extremely competitive. Uh, they come in and they push me to my limits to make sure that I can work with them. They'll come in and ask me questions that I need to be prepared to handle. 
so it's you know that's to me what I, what I enjoy most working with them. Uh, I enjoy the, the dissection part of the art aspect of the class. Uh, the kids enjoy that a lot. A lot of them take it because of that. Is working with the cats and then I actually get to see you know, what's going on inside, not so much out of a book, but working with it with a real animal. So that that helps a lot. The, the cat is, is, a, is a large part of the anatomy class in which we normally start those the middle to the end of, uh, of October and work with them through March or April. And it's essentially a, uh, we get cats to dissect and we start going through each system of the cat that, that, we, can, that we can get to during the year. Obviously we can't get to them all because the cats do get a little bit gamey. Uh, after a while they dry up and, and get difficult to work with. But that's a big, that's a big part of the class. It's a, it makes it a real hands-on form rather than showing them here's a picture of a muscle in the book, say, okay, you can take that muscle out of the animal, you can pull on that muscle, you can tug on the muscle, you can feel the texture of the muscle, you can see what it does. And that's, to that, to me, it's a real valuable learning experience for them because it's, they're not seeing the functioning going on versus reading about it. Even though that it's, it's difficult for them, uh, even though it's a challenge for them, it doesn't mean that it can't be fun. And uh, the whole, and that's, and that's one of my philosophies towards education in general, is it's a fun process. And there's different ways to approach it, and if you can enjoy it, it, it makes it that much more. It's easier to work with with the kids. So it's, and we do have. I think the sense of humor is a very valuable aspect of teaching, and especially working with some of the things that we work with, you have to have a sense of humor, and because some things can, can make the kids uncomfortable, and they deal with that through that sense of humor, and it sets them at ease. But it's yes, it's a challenge for them. It's a challenge for me. Uh, we get into levels. I've had parents comment that are taking anatomy classes in college. Say, well, gosh, you guys are doing the same thing that we're doing, and that's the way the class is designed. It's approximately a sophomore level anatomy course that you'd see being taught at universities. I, I guess the ultimate goal that I have for them to take with them, over and above anything, is an appreciation for the body and how it works. Um, to have a true understanding of the entire systems and the interrelationships of the systems and how the, the whole body works together is a bit much to ask in a year. Uh, you, you go to school for, for years for that kind of thing. But to walk out with a familiarity or with an appreciation for what's going on, I think to me it is the, the, the most valuable thing they can walk out with. David is a firm believer in the hands-on approach to learning. He wants his students to become both physically and mentally involved in the learning process. He likes to use cooperative learning as a way of developing the critical thinking mentality which underlies his curriculum. Kids learn new things through past experiences and if, they, if they've experienced something and, they, and they've, they, they've, they've felt it and worked with it and, and, and so on, when you get into a more abstract concept, then they can make that connection or you can help them make that connection and they, it helps the learning process. A, a good example is with, with the blood work we're doing today. Uh, some people view blood work in schools as a real big no-no uh, because of the you know, potential pathogens you might run into. But I, they need to understand that handled correctly, one, it's okay. And they, they shouldn't be afraid of it. They should, they should respect it. But two, to, to see their own blood up on that screen, to see what's happening to those cells and that type of solution, that's what they're going to remember. And they'll remember that experience much more so than if I just threw an overhead up and said, okay, if I would have done this, this is what would have happened. We would like to congratulate David Helm on being selected the Fayette County Public Schools High School Teacher of the Year. He is a wonderful example that it's never too late to find one's true calling. It is safe to say he has made a significant impact during his four years at Tates Creek High School. He is currently serving his second year on the school's site-based decision-making council and last year received the Fame Award, a recognition bestowed by a former student who selected him as being that student's most influential teacher. It is also probably safe to say that he is a teacher that many other students will never forget. When asked how he would like for them to remember him, he had this to say. I hope my students, when they look back at the experience that they had in my classroom, that they they look back and, and they one they feel like they learned something, and that's always kind of a nice feeling. But two, that that they realize that the educational process and that learning one is a continuing process. Um, 
I try to you know, model to them that I'm always learning stuff just like they're always learning stuff. It's, you know, it goes both ways. And two, that the process isn't painful, that it really is fun to learn new things and that the, the things that we're learning are applicable, that we can apply them to what we're doing. And that to, to continue to learn and to continue to have fun doing it is a great thing. It's a good thing to do. And it, uh, I just, I, I guess, I just, I just want to look back and say, yeah, it's enjoyable, an enjoyable experience, and I got something out of it, and I'd do it again if I had the opportunity. So.